Hi guys, I'm Anna and I'm back here again. And as usual, I'm gonna give you all about a minute to get in. So we're gonna go on mute and uh, we'll, back, we'll be back with my guests here in just a second. Alrighty. Well, it looks like you guys are coming in and I'm going to go ahead and kick right off. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to DSS Break. I'm here live every Thursday to talk about data science experiences and best practices with leading data professionals in a 15 minute break. I'm Anna Anderson, CEO and founder of Formula by the home of the Data Science Salon, and I'm streaming live from our HQ here, located in the heart of Miami, right next to the Design District. And today I'm really, really excited to welcome my guest, Meenakshi uh, Sharma, and she's been a technical product manager at Wayfair for the past three years and will tell us a little bit more about her career path in the next 15 minutes. Welcome, Meenakshi. Thank you so much um, for being here with us. And let's kick off with you telling us a little bit about how you got into the space in the first place. Absolutely. And thank you for having me. I'm glad to uh, chat with folks here. Um, regarding my career, it started a long time ago. Uh, I, I have, I'm by training, I'm, I, I did undergraduate studies in India um, in computer science. And then, like many others, I joined an ID information services uh, company, Sintel, and was a technical analyst there. Uh, for uh, for half one and a half years uh, around. Uh, at that point, I I felt I needed to learn more, um, and I pursued at that point a um, master's degree in computer science at University of Houston Clear Lake. Uh, it was my time here that I got into you know I took advanced data mining courses, machine learning courses, and I got very fascinated uh, with the field. That was my introduction. I uh, did a couple of projects and. And I continued my studies. I enrolled with University of Houston uh, main campuses um, PhD program. And here I joined um, a research lab and I was doing um, research in the area of bioinformatics, so developing uh, algorithms and tools for uh, bioinformaticians, basically. Quite exciting field. Um, I finished my program and then I uh, joined uh, MathWorks. Uh, they develop uh, softwares for computing and scientific um, community. And uh, this product uh, specifically uh, was um, software as a service, uh, allowing uh, data aggregation and analytics of uh, IoT data. Uh, apart, uh, you know, during some, some point in my career, I got attracted to product management um, and, and then um, I, I joined uh, Wayfair's technical program manager as a technical program manager. And, uh, and now I'm, you know, uh, within my team, we are like foundational uh, team that uh, services to machine learning community within Wayfair. And they develop uh, machine learning models that actually serve different stages of business, right from customer acquisition to delivery. So it's been exciting, right? Um, and yeah, that, that's me. That's awesome. No, thank you so much for sharing your story. And I actually dropped off for a second because my internet went out, but I'm back. But people could see you talk, so nothing was lost. Don't worry. But that's what happens when you're live. That kind of stuff can happen. But anyways, that was wonderful. Like, I think that's a really interesting transition. And what is your initial motivation to start a kind of a career in computer, computer science? Like, so the next question that I had. Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah, I initially I I was very excited in the biology field actually. So it's it's quite interesting. But um, but I think at that point, um, computer science had just been integrated into the school, um, 
and what motivated me was uh, the fact that this uh, this field was very pervasive you could uh, be a computer scientist and you could be in within any domain and you could still contribute to the field mm -hmm. and also the career prospects seem very very nice so those were my two guiding principles yeah no those are great um and i think the next question and topic of conversation is a little bit different um, have you felt, you know, as a woman, you know, do you feel like there's still a gender gap in the space? And what advice would you give to other women that are aspiring career in data science? Because I feel like a lot of women are not pursuing the career because they think there's not enough women there, right? So, and it's not very inviting. So maybe you could talk a little bit about, I mean, why it's such a cool space and we need Absolutely. more women need to be part of it, right? So. Yeah, I can um, share, uh, like I shared my journey, so I can double click on some of those points. Um, to be frank, I never, whenever um, I look for options, I never look for is, are there women already or not? Um, I personally have never factored that into my decision. Uh, the, I think for, more, for me, the most important thing is, what are the kind of problems you would like to solve? What are your skill sets? Uh, you know, where do you find yourself spending most of the time? Is it is it an exciting field? Um, and you cannot find all the answers, so you need to talk to people. I would I would suggest uh, talk to experts or folks who have been in, in the same industry for maybe a year and five years and ten years. And again, it's it's not possible to do that all at the same time. Uh, but get some guidance and counsel. And then, then only make that final call. Um, and regarding uh, women in data science, I think in general, at the foundational level, we could, you know, we need more female students in the STEM STEM careers, following the STEM careers. Mm -hmm. uh, there's definitely the proportion is not there. Um, but I would encourage uh, that there is uh, plenty of opportunity. I have. Uh, found myself focusing on the whys and then 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 you do make the full commitment uh, to that goal or objective. Um, and the one thing I would share is that I learned very late was, you know, I need to network a little bit more and learn more, have have a mentor or coach uh, along the way. So that that makes a lot of difference. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think, you know, mentorship is a big thing in this community that I think that we need more of, right? And networking, it's, I think in any industry, right? It's yeah. all about who you know, right? And, and and you learn a lot because otherwise you are, you, you learn about different perspectives, different experiences, and you connect the dots and maybe you find something exciting and worth pursuing in your career later, so. Right, right, for sure. And maybe you could tell me a little bit about how your, role as a product manager is different from your engineering role yeah that, you know that's that's definitely a different cool transition would love to hear your experience about it absolutely um yeah it's funny um um i i was i'm trained in engineering but by, by background um and computer scientist um i did learn um uh, that you know i would love to get closer to the users and the pain points and how the product is shaped. I got very curious at some point in my career. And and then um, how it is different, it's it's in some aspects, uh, because I'm still in into technical fields, so I can still leverage my skills, uh, like machine learning, I can, it helps me to understand the user a bit better. Uh, and in some aspects is different, because now I have to focus on very different set of questions why are we building this product why is this feature necessary is there a real need um, when you look at all these uh, user pain points is there a real need that we need to serve and when do we serve it like prioritization and um, now you also have to work hand in hand with the engineering uh, team so it's um, a lot of aspects are a little similar like the ceremonies the activities are similar but now you're focused on very different set of questions i think that's the biggest uh, change yeah no for sure and i'm sure it's really helpful to have your engineering background mm -hmm. so you can really communicate with that team too right 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 specifically in my uh, space um, it helps me to um, uh, be the bridge uh, so i can communicate to the users and then i come back and i can communicate with engineers and understand uh, what their constraints are 
Right. No, that's really, that's really cool. Um, and my last question is a little bit more technical, you know, about uh, model deployment and uh, development. We know mm -hmm. that a lot of models are developed and they never are deployed. So what is kind of your recipe for getting machine learning model, machine learning models successfully de actually deployed, you know, versus them just sitting around? Great question. Um, I think, yeah, there has, you, you must have seen many statistics, like a lot of models are never deployed and there are several reasons I'll touch based on some. Um, I'll say from the beginning, understand the requirements uh, very specifically because there's a business use case that you know is associated that you're trying to answer. So understand the question being answered and in the goal of that problem. What, what is the problem that you're actually trying to solve? Um, apart from that, uh, data is a critical part. Make sure you use the right data, all the transformations, and, and then you have data scientists who actually focus on uh, these areas. But there's a uh, you know, collaboration between data engineering and data scientists. Um, apart from, um, you know, developing model, optimizing it, I think deployment uh, is 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 an also an area where you need, need not, you shouldn't be ignoring is uh, following all the DevOps principle, make sure uh, testing is done, make sure you have all the alerts. Uh, there's, there's a lot of uh, signals that you need to catch, like, uh, model performance metrics um, and change in data right. and all of that. So complex problem to be solved and a lot of factors going in making this uh, successful. Yeah. Right. And I think that's going to continue to be, you know, a problem that a lot of different tools are trying to solve. Right. Absolutely. Um, so, but, and you re recently just presented a talk at ML Ops Salon, which was a great talk. I really enjoyed that. And that was about the challenges and best practices for building capabilities for machine learning development and training. Mm -hmm. So um, you guys can watch that actually on demand and our team members gonna share the link with everybody. Mm -hmm. So uh, make sure you watch that. Thank you so much for joining us today, Manakshi. It was really great to talk to you, very inspiring. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed and have a wonderful rest of the week. I'll see you next week. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And Bye. Bye.